A year ago, we all thought of Mikael Bridges as a solid NBA player, a complimentary guy, someone that's going to help you win games, but is never going to be a prolific offensive player. But last year in Phoenix, and certainly since his trade to Brooklyn in exchange for Kevin Durant, Bridges' development into a legitimate offensive weapon for the Nets is one of the more interesting developments that we've seen in the NBA in years. Now, if you go look at some clips from the first couple of seasons of Bridges in Phoenix, you're going to see a lot of this, a lot of activity in transition, a lot of just just easy kickouts for him. He's going to be a catch and shoot guy, a complimentary player. This is exactly what we thought Mikael Bridges was going to be as a draft prospect. He's going to guard, he's going to shoot. He might occasionally attack a closeout and create some of his own offense as he does here. You can see with his dribble handoff here, everybody on the floor is worried about Devin Booker. There's only a couple minutes left in the game. This is the guy that they're concerned about. Mikael Bridges' offense in Phoenix for the first couple years of his career exclusively came off of what Booker did and then Chris Paul, who's over here getting ready to come into the game. As the play develops, of course, everybody's worried about Booker. Bones Highland ends up staying on the high side here and Bridges gets a wide open lane. They're worried about floor spacing on the other side. I'm not sure why we're that worried about campaign in the corner, but we're just not paying attention, Monty Moore, so that's fine. Sometimes that happens. This is how Mikhail Bridges' offensive possessions looked. If it wasn't a catch and shoot three, if it wasn't something in transition, it was off of attention being paid to guys like Devin Booker and Chris Paul. This is what we're talking about. We talk about a complimentary player, and again, that's exactly what everybody thought Bridges was going to be. He was a really good player in transition great size for you and someone that you'd be very excited to have on your team but certainly not an elite offensive weapon not someone that you're running offense through here's another example again occasionally you're going to see an attack of a closeout from bridges that's a nice finish at the rim but look who throws this pass look who actually creates this once again it's devin booker he's the one that's driving he kicks it out to bridges who then gets a lane to get to the rim but bridges really didn't do much with this he attacked a closeout which is a nice skill to have and something that differentiates players like Bridges, even at this point in his career from guys like, you know, JJ Redick that aren't going to create much off of this catch and shoot, but it's a smaller player. They've already gotten a switch that they want. All the advantage has already been created for Mikael Bridges in his first couple of years in Phoenix. He does a good job capitalizing on that by getting to the rim and finishing. But again, the initial creation comes off of what Booker is doing here. Now, over the years, he started to get a little bit more comfortable offensively. They started to do a couple of extra things with him to try and diversify this offense. And this is an example of that. They're coming down and kind of semi-transition. Bridges is actually going to set a screen for Chris Paul as a bit of a smaller player. They've already got kind of a good matchup. This is uh, Brunson at the time. This is Hardaway. They're not really worried about any of these defenders, but they're just trying to get into an early action and not something as simple as just, hey, let's have our big come down here and set a screen and then just roll to the rims. So you can see Bridges sets that screen. He recognizes that all of these guys are on top. There's only two players down here. There's three guys in the corner here for Phoenix if he did end up wanting to kick this ball out, but it's going to be pretty simple for him. He's just going to roll to the rim. Porzingis is there. Nice finish for Bridges. By no means am I trying to say that Mikael Bridges, because his game was so simple in the beginning of his career, was a bad player. I'm not trying to say that at all. This is just an illustration of how far he's come as a prospect. Now, as we keep going here, I want you to think about who else is on the floor in some of these clips. Who else is on the floor alongside Mikael Bridges? Again, that's off of a Chris Paul kick. We've got uh, Devin Booker up here. However, something interesting started to happen at the end of Bridges' last year in Phoenix towards the trade deadline. Chris Paul would get hurt. Devin Booker would get hurt. And all of a sudden, it's Mikael Bridges and like just some random guys out there. And what the Suns started to see, even when they still have Booker and Paul on the floor, they started to see a little bit of this. I mean, this is not an easy play at all for Bridges. Getting This is a multiple dribble move into a step back in the mid-range. These are the kinds of things that you start to look at as a coaching staff and say, hey, maybe this guy's got a little bit more to him. He catches the ball deep here. He could easily just shoot this. I mean, he's got enough space to shoot the three. If he said, you know what? Let me show off a little bit more of my game. I've been working on my game in the summer. He's going to get to the middle of the floor gonna get cut off once spin back get cut off again step back create space in the mid-range that kind of shot making ability in the mid-range is a development you don't often see from guys like bridges that were just these you know complimentary guys early in their careers again there's the slip in the screen again that we saw earlier starting to show a little bit more creativity in terms of what bridges is going to provide and as we got closer to the trade deadline we started to see more and more of this so booker is actually on the floor he's over there but ignore that for the second look at the other players that are on the floor alongside mikhail bridges right now we've got landry shamit Dari. Sarich, uh, DeAndre Ayton, and then Mikhail Bridges. They don't really have anywhere else to go for offense, apart from Booker, again, who's on the other side of the floor. You started to see a lot more of this. Bridges gets the screen, Sarich rolls. Shooting threes off the dribble is not something that was in the scouting report for Mikhail Bridges as a prospect. This kind of play is unforeseen for him as a young player. He knows he's getting the screen coming this way. He has the option to go to the baseline, but as soon as he comes off the screen, the defense sags off. He sees that he has an opening. 
That's that's a big time play. That is something that you're not going to see from a lot of complimentary players. Now, all of a sudden, even with Devin Booker on the floor, we're starting to call plays for Mikhail Bridges. We're seeing some of this mid-range creation. We're seeing him shooting threes off the dribble. Now we're going to start setting screens here. You're going to start coming off of a pin down or curl into the lane. And he starts to get more and more comfortable with a little bit more of an on-ball roll. Nice separation there on the end one. And then it gets to the point where, hey, maybe we're missing some guys on one night. Maybe Chris Paul isn't playing tonight. Devin Booker's not playing tonight. Look who's on the floor. Josh Okogie, Bismack Biombo, campaign. I think that's Damian Lee. And then we've got Mikhail Bridges over here in the corner. Now, in this particular play, whether it's Bridges or otherwise, it's not really going to matter. He's just going to cut to the rim. Biombo with a nice pass. He finishes at the rim. But he's starting to get put in more and more of these kinds of situations where he's like the best player on the floor. Here's another example. We've got Shamit, Akogi, Biombo, Lee, and then Mikhail Bridges. Who else are you going to run plays for? And that, that happens a lot during the year. You know, maybe some guys get hurt. But to be able to capitalize on that, continue to grow your skills again, getting to the mid range, that touch in the mid range is really what separates him and has continued to allow him to grow and develop. And what's really cool about that development for Bridges just specifically is he's still going to do all of this stuff this is Damian Lillard this is one of the hardest covers in the entire league this is him getting a screen from Nurkic Bridges is over the top of it Bridges is obviously a bigger guy six foot eight six foot nine long arms but having the quickness and the ability to stick with someone like Damian Lillard is something that not a lot of wings have and to be able to have someone that has developed as much as he has offensively and still keep this level of defense Damian Lillard's not getting by him he's not giving him any room to hit a step back three from the half court line on Mikhail Bridges was all over Damian Lillard. That kind of two-way skill set is really difficult to find. Again, another smaller guard here. This is CJ McCollum giving him every move that he has and gets rejected at the rim. Now, these are older clips from a couple of years ago, but this kind of defensive intensity still exists for Bridges now, even as he's transitioned into a new role in Brooklyn. And having someone like that that kind of develops into a star offensively, but still keeps this level of defensive intensity is so unbelievably valuable for a team. So we started to see all that really cool development from Bridges towards the end of his time in Phoenix when guys were missing time and he really started to get much more comfortable in a role as as more of a primary creator and then he gets traded to Brooklyn and everything opens up for him from that point on because what we were talking about earlier in terms of him being the best player on the floor in Phoenix the the lineups that Brooklyn was starting by the end of the year there's no question who the best player on the floor is we've got Dinwiddie Claxton is a very good defense player Finney Smith at Camp Johnson there's no other place for the offense to come from and all of a sudden we're looking at Mikhail Bridges in isolation situations against one of the better perimeter defenders in the league when he wants to be Jimmy Butler this is something that you never would have thought that he would develop into as a draft prospect again gets to the mid-range he's so tall he can get pretty much any shot off that he wants to and this what we're talking about earlier in terms of how valuable it is that he's still that complimentary guy because you don't just need to have him be on the ball in creating everything he can still be an off-ball player he can still be a great corner three-point shooter a great spacer he's not going to give up any of that complimentary stuff as Simmons gets a nice pass out here to him in the corner just because he's suddenly the primary offensive guy and these kinds of plays right here this to me is the last step if you really see yourself as one of these elite guys one of these guys that's going to be one of the better you know two-way players in the entire league once you start to get these kinds of switches and you see Jimmy Butler switching off on a Cam Johnson, you get Max Struess on the perimeter. No disrespect to Max Struess. He puts in good effort, but not a great defender. And you start to go into isolation mode off these kinds of switches. That's how you know a guy's confidence level is where it needs to be in terms of being one of the better two-way players in the entire league. If you're coming off of a pin down this way and you get the ball on an advantage or you're getting a kick out and driving off of that and attacking closeouts, all that's fine. But when it's all on you to create in your own isolation situation and you see someone go at a weaker defender that's how you know the confidence level is there and very quickly in Brooklyn that's what happened with Mikhail Bridges again we're getting that advantageous switch we're getting to our spot in the mid-range and we're hitting the jumper but there's one more skill that all the elite scores all the best offensive players in the league have and that's the ability to draw fouls and obviously that comes with having the ball in your hand getting in some of these advantageous situations but the ability to draw fouls is a skill it's something that some of the best players in the league always have in their bag and with more opportunity in Brooklyn Mikhail Bridges started to get to the line a ton more. And if you're getting six, seven free points every single night, that scoring average is going to go up and you're going to start to truly be seen as one of the better players in the league. And all this for Brooklyn is very exciting because Mikhail Bridges is a perfect fit no matter where you go moving forward as an organization. You can see him still getting an offensive rebound, still being that complimentary option. If you find a primary on-ball guy that you like better, that guy is not going to be Cam Thomas, but let's just say that in the future they get a guard that they really, really like. 
Mikael Bridges can be the second best player on a really good team. He doesn't have to be the primary guy. You can do some of this like Chris Middleton type stuff where, okay, we've got our main guy again. Ignore the fact that this is Cam Thomas. We're going to set you a little screen in the middle of the floor. You're going to pop up here and we're going to get you to your spots. Even if we have someone that maybe we like better as an individual player offensively in pick and roll. And when you think about how cheap his contract is, how many different ways he fits in with this team, his continued development, his defense, all those things together, Mikael Bridges might legitimately be one of the most valuable players in the entire league and his development from where he was previously to now is pretty unforeseen in terms of the kind of prospect that he was developing into this level of an offensive player. And there's two real main areas that I want to see continued improvement from him this season. One is this, if he can continue to attack in the post like this, it's going to be that much more of a matchup issue. Again, I mentioned Chris Middleton earlier as kind of a decent comp for Bridges. If you're going to get a smaller guy, this is Gabe Vincent here. If you're going to get a smaller guy on you in the post and you're as big as Bridges and Chris Middleton are, those are matchups you need to be able to take advantage of. I would expect him to continue to work on that part of his game and add even more to it. And then the other part is this. Now, this is going to be a bit of an isolation possession for him, but I want to see whether it's with Claxton or Simmons, I want to see a little bit more of this, a little bit more ball screen stuff, a little bit more creation, a little bit more playmaking. I just want to know if that's a thing. Is it going to be something where, yeah, he can hit some pull-up jumpers and pick and rolls. He can find his teammates a little bit more as a playmaker, or is it just going to be, you know, isolations in the post, isolations at the top of the key, and then all that complimentary stuff we talked about earlier. If he adds pick and roll creation to his game, which there's no reason to believe at this point he wouldn't continue to develop, the sky just continues to be the limit for Mikhail Bridges. And now that he's going to be even more comfortable in Brooklyn in his situation, I really can't wait to see exactly what he adds to his game this year.